Hey, Ray Del Vecchio here from WebsiteProfitCourse.com. Today, we're going to walk through the process of migrating a website to SiteGround. In the last week, I've transferred over eight websites, and they make the process super easy using their Migrator plugin. As always, you might hit a few snags along the way. I did, so we're also going to talk through them, and I'll show you how to power through them. Right now I'm logged into my SiteGround account and I just want to make a note that I have a video that I'll link up showing you how to get set up with SiteGround. In that video I use the startup plan which is great for one website. In this tutorial I have the Grow Big plan and I'm creating multiple websites on my account. Depending on how you plan on using the hosting account you can choose between one of them two. And if this video helps you out I'm going to link up my affiliate link for SiteGround. If you sign up to them through that link that's the best way to support my channel and it allows me to create free tutorials like this. We're back here on our SiteGround website list. I'm just going to click the new website button. From here you can either select a new domain or if you're just migrating an existing website like we are you can select existing domain and we just type it in here and hit continue and they're going to give us a little warning message to let us know that this domain is not registered with SiteGround so you just need to have access to that domain registrar so you can update the settings to point at the SiteGround when we're done. So we'll hit the continue button and this is where it's really easy. You can select the migrate website option. If you want them to do it, you can pay $30 and it says it takes up to five days, but we're gonna do this within a couple minutes using their migration plugin. So let's select that, the super fast WordPress auto migration and we'll hit continue. And this is just a little upsell for their site sc scanner. We don't need to add this. I'll just hit finish. The way that this works is they create a WordPress migration token and all you have to do is add that once you install their plugin on your existing website. It eliminates the need to go through the process of creating a new database and, and syncing up with that database. It's so easy so let's show you how to do it. You can either download the plugin here but we're just going to do that from the WordPress admin area and you just want to save these two cred credentials. This is your migration token and these are your name servers. So just make sure that you save these somewhere in a text file. I'll copy it. And we're all set. So let me pull up the set of steps that I wrote down here. And so we just went through the first one, add a new website. The next thing that I like to do for every website, and this is optional, is add my login credentials for FTP. FTP is just file transfer protocol. It allows you to connect to your web server using a separate program, and I use FileZilla for that. If you'd like to do that, I'll show you how to go through that process. Let's go back to our SiteGround account, and we're going to go to our site tools for the website that we just set up. And from within here, this is where you can manage everything. If we go over to Site, this is where we can create an FTP account. So this is the details that you need to load into your FTP program, your FTP host name and the port number. So let me pull up FileZilla right now. Let me copy it first. And I'll open up FileZilla and I'll just hit the Site Manager button here to add a new website. And we can name it. We'll paste in our host name, add in the port number. And then let me go back here to grab our username and password. I'll just put in my first name for the account name and the username is at that domain. We'll generate a password and copy that and hit create and then just load that into FileZilla. And if we hit connect, we should see our web server and we just got to click into our domain folder within the public HTML folder. And we have this default.html, which is just like a simple landing page that shows you that the site is under construction. Let's go back to our steps here. And the next step is log into WordPress and delete plugins. I have uh, here that we want to delete really simple SSL, which I normally recommend to force HTTPS on your website to make sure that it's secure. SiteGround has their own optimization plugin. So if you use something like Auto Optimize or W3 Total Cache, I just like to disable and delete them before migrating over. This is a look at the website. This is really just a blank website right now using the newest 2021 theme on WordPress. I have the WordPress admin page open over here. I'm going to go into the plugins and I will disable really simple SSL. We'll deactivate it, but I do want to keep HTTPS and we want to add the migrator plugin. So all you have to do is go to add plugins and search for SiteGround. Like I said, they have the Migrator plugin and they have an Optimizer plugin. Those are going to be the first two ones we see here. So let's install and activate the Migrator. 
And once it's activated, it adds a new menu down here, SG Migrator. So all we need to do is go in here and add our token. So let's paste that in and initiate the transfer. As this starts, I just want to mention that I went through one website where this failed. And the reason it failed was because the PHP memory limit wasn't high enough. If you go into cPanel, you can update that. You know, you might need to look into your web hosting support files to see how to do that. Or if you jump on a support chat or call up your web hosting company, they're probably able to do that themselves if you don't want to handle it. But just give this a try. And if you don't hit any errors, you don't have to worry about that step. The other thing that I hit with this transfer is if you have a website that is on a www domain like for instance this doesn't have that this is just https and then my domain name without the www this migration is going to change your database instances of that domain on wordpress without the www and then all you have to do is once you migrate over is go into the settings general section and change that back to the www after the migration's over <laughs> so since i don't have that set up on this website i don't have to do it on here but that's just another issue that you might run into. They gave me a warning. You know, there was no errors in the process. The migration worked fine, but just before the migration started, they give you a little warning about that if that's the case. And there it is. We made it through the transfer successfully. They give you a temporary URL that's valid for 48 hours before you make the change on the domain to point to SiteGround. And this is another issue that I had. If you go to this, I'll see if it, if it happens on here, but yeah, like this transfers, or I'm, I'm sorry, it redirects over to the regular domain name, this temporary domain. I think this is because of the HT access file that WordPress generates. So the way that we can bypass that to actually view the domain name on SiteGround before we make that domain switch, it's to open up something called your hosts file, which that exists on both your Mac and your PC. It's just a local file where you can map an IP address to a domain name Let's pull up that file. And before I do that, I just want to go back into the SiteGround site tools. We'll go to our dashboard, and this is where we can get our IP address. So they tell us right up here that the domain is not pointing to the site yet. These are our name servers with the IPs of the name servers, but we just want the site IP. So let's copy this, and we're going to open up our hosts file. And if you look up at the top here, this is um, showing you the path on your computer. It's in your C drive or whatever you know drive Windows is installed. And then the Windows System32 drivers ETC folder. And you just got to open up this hosts file. I do it with Notepad++. They also give you a message to make sure you're running in administrator mode, otherwise you won't be able to save it. And this is the format. You just do your IP address. We want to add in our SiteGround IP address. And just to be safe, you can copy this and make sure you do the uh, www version in case you have any references to that within the website. So let's go ahead and save that. And I'm going to open up an incognito window just to make sure that there's no cache issues, you know, nothing saved within the browser. This should be on our new host, SiteGround host. You can see here we're getting the message that it's not private, and this is because we don't have the SSL security certificate generated. I went on um, a chat with SiteGround, and they said you can't do this until you make that domain setting switch to point to their name servers. So we can just check this out really quickly. And there it is. This is our site on SiteGround's hosting. So you just want to browse through, make sure everything's the same. You don't have any errors here. And if everything looks good, we can move on to the next step. So we have done this. I just I, I want to note one other thing, and that's if you have any custom files on your web server. The migration only looks for WordPress files. So if for some reason you have something on the top level server, like a folder that's unique, that is not included within that WP content folder, that's not going to get copied over, and you're going to have to do that manually. I would say in probably 90 to 95% of cases, you're not going to have that. Everything's going to be contained within your WordPress installation. And that's something that you can do with FTP. But now that we're done with checking the website, I like adding email forwarders just to make sure that everything is smooth with the transfer with email. Because when you change the name servers, that's going to affect any email accounts that exist on that website. And we can go into their email section. You can either create an account or a forwarder, but I normally like doing forwarders. So I'm just going to put ray at d2brands.net and forward that to my Gmail address. And we got a forwarder set up now. If we go back to the list of steps, we're ready to make the DNS change, the name server update. 
And if for some reason you still want to host your email at your previous provider, maybe you have an account set up with them and you just want to update the website to SiteGround, you can update the A record with that IP address that we just put into that hosts file. The A record is what controls where the website is pointed to. The name servers, they change over everything, website, email, all that stuff. I have this domain registered with GoDaddy. So I'm already here on my domain page and I just want to click the manage DNS and depending on who your provider is, you're just going to have to find this page or where you edit your DNS settings. And all we do is copy and paste the two name servers that SiteGround gave us. We have the settings page loaded up and this is where we edit our name servers. So I just got to change them. So let's paste in our new name servers and the second one is NS2. So once we save this, the, the switch is going to start to happen and this is called domain propagation. It can take anywhere between 24 to 48 hours. I just got to click yes to make sure I consent to this. And a lot of times it happens much quicker than that. You know, I've had it switch over within a couple minutes. And this is where another domain provider it took way longer than it did with GoDaddy. I'm not exactly sure how that works with the different domain registrars. But you can use a website. Just type in DNS check or something like that into Google. Here's one here, dnschecker.org. You can type in your domain name. Either look for that A record, which is going to be the IP address, or switch this to NS, which is your name server, and you should see the SiteGround name servers. You know, when it starts to transfer over, you're probably going to see the mixed results between these different locations. That's why it takes up to 48 hours. It's because it has to propagate across the world. I mean, this is just a couple minutes after the fact, so we'll see how quickly it changed. And there you go. You see the mixed results, but we do have the new name servers already in Mountain View, you know, at Google. <laughs> Let's go back to our steps and see what else we have to do. So now that we made the name server updates, once SiteGround notices that, we're going to be able to install the SSL to make sure that we have everything on HTTPS. And we're going to be able to set up our SG Optimizer plugin. That's where we can force the HTTPS. And they also have options in there to do caching and other optimizations like lazy loading for images, minifying files, combining files, that kind of thing. So to install the SSL certificate, we go over to Security, SSL Manager, and just select the Let's Encrypt option, the first one. If you have subdomains, you might want to do the wildcard option. Let's just click Get and see if this works. And this is where I got an error the first time before I made the name server switch. And there we go. It's successfully installed now. So let's log into our WordPress site. I just want to mention I still have this um, hosts redirect to our SiteGround IP address. I'm going to set everything up just to make sure that we're not accidentally loading the old server and making updates there. And then once we set up our SiteGround site, we can remove this and just let it propagate. And then I wouldn't make any changes once you have this done for, like I said, at least 48 hours. Make sure everything transfers over correctly. I'll also show you a way to check to make sure that it's using this IP address. Because we migrated our database over, this is going to be your same username and password. And if we go to the plugin section, this is where we're going to notice that you get this error or warning that says our, our migrator plugin has been deactivated because it doesn't exist. So they delete this once the migration is done. And then you're going to see the other plugin, the SG Optimizer, automatically installed. And you have the menu down here just like you did with the migrator. So let me delete the really simple SSL now that we're done with that. And we can enable HTTPS through the optimizer. It's under the environment optimization. Yeah, enable HTTPS. So we're just going to make sure this is checked on. And then you can go through the rest of these settings to further optimize your site. You're probably going to want to check the page load times and see you know, what the difference is between when you first have this installed and when you make these optimization changes. And you may want to get a third data point before you do the transfer at all to see if your site's faster on SiteGround, which mine was. Over the front end optimization tab, this is where you do the minification of HTML, JavaScript files, and sometimes the order of JavaScript files or CSS files, that can affect the way your site looks. So you probably want to do these one by one and make sure nothing's messed up. Go through you know, your important pages. This is more likely to screw things up if you either have a lot of plugins installed or if you have any custom code in there. Here in the media optimization tab, this is where you can automatically optimize images that you upload or you can enable lazy loading which I recommend you doing. This just makes sure that if you have you know 15 or 20 images on a page it loads it one by one as you scroll down the page instead of doing all of that before the page is rendered. 
But that's it to migrating the site. I mean, this is way easier than even using a plugin like Duplicator, which I have a full tutorial on how to use that if you're migrating to another host that doesn't have a plugin like this. Even with that, you have to set up your database and get your database credentials. This completely abstracts that just using that WordPress token at the beginning. Let's make sure our HTTP certificate is installed and we just loaded up the page. You can see here we finally have that lock. You can check the certificate here to make sure it's the date of the transfer. I already told you I'm forcing that IP address using the hosts file. So what you want to do is eliminate this. I'm just going to leave it as is so we can show this IP, the 35.208. You want to delete this, save your hosts file, and then right click and hit the inspect button. And let me bring this into the same window here. Go over to the network tab and then reload the website. And then just look for any file on here that's under your domain name. And if you go over here to the headers tab, and look for the remote address, this is where you're going to see your IP address. So if you're still seeing that old IP address, that means that the name server changes haven't propagated. And if you give it a little time, that will change. And that's how you'll know that your website is completely transferred over to your SiteGround account. And if you have any issues, I've had great experiences so far with SiteGround's customer service reps. The two times I jumped on a customer service chat, there was no wait time and they helped me out right away and they were super helpful. So if you're interested in moving your website over to SiteGround, I'll link up the video showing you how to get set up with SiteGround. And if this video showed you the way, the best way you can say thanks is by using my affiliate link, which I'll link up in the description below. I get a small commission if you set up your site on SiteGround using that link. And I love creating these free tutorials. So it's really a win-win-win. Last but not least, give this video a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to my channel for more WordPress videos and web design business tips. If you have any issues, leave a comment below. I'd be interested to hear if you hit any snags or if anything was unclear to you. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a great day.